Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you a super simple tutorial and that is how to make this tux bow. And I've used a three inch wide ribbon to make this. I love using three inch wide ribbon to make tux bows. You can use a more narrow ribbon, but you will just end up with a not so tall, not so big bow. This is a perfect size for this sort of bow. And it is obviously, because it, it's a three inch wide ribbon, so it's just under three inch wide tall time you put the gathering in the middle and it's four inches across. So it's just a really nice size, super simple to make. I will show you how to make this with either sewing the pin chin or you can freehand it. I'm also going to be adding some rhinestones to this one at the end. I'll show you that when we get to it. So to make this bow, I've got a needle here already threaded with some strong thread and I've already popped a knot in the end. I've got a lighter to heat seal the ends of my ribbon and I also use this to hold the ribbon together as we're working on the bow. I've got my clip. I've got a piece of one centimetre wide by 11 centimetres and this is to wrap my clip. And I've got two pieces here. This is to wrap the centre. I do like this little twisted centre just to bring out all the different colours in the bow. And these two pieces are six centimetres in length and they're one centimetre wide. And then this main piece for the main part of the bow is three inch wide ribbon or seven and a half centimetres wide. And you will need one piece cut to 23 centimetres in length or just over nine inches in length. And that is just one piece. And to cut my ribbon, I use these Fiskars fabric scissors. These also cut through glitter fabrics, leatherettes, so easily. Everything that I use in this video, I will link them all in the description below so you can check out all of these products. And I've also got my hot glue gun here, which I'm going to turn on now to be heating up. So taking our ribbon and my lighter, I'm going to heat seal the edge because as you can see, you end up with these frays. I'm just going to cut that long fray off actually because they can get caught by the flame. And then using my lighter, I'm going to run it along the edge of the ribbon and this will take away any frays, also prevent further fraying. So taking our ribbon, I'm going to make a loop with it now. So I'm going to take these two ends and I'm going to overlap by just over a half a centimetre. And then using my lighter, making sure that it is straight, I'm going to melt the fibres just on that edge. And as those fibres melt, that will hold the two sides together. Do the same on the other side, making sure it's straight. So it's overlapped by just over half a centimetre. Using my lighter to melt those fibres, give it a little pinch, being careful not to burn your fingers. And that just holds the ribbon in place. And then I'm going to find the centre. So I'm just folding it in half now. And I'm just going to use a bit of heat from my lighter just so I can mark a crease in there so I can see where the centre of the bow is. And now I'm going to bring this centre piece and meet it with the middle of where they overlap. So flattening it down, lining up my crease just in between where the two pieces overlap. And that way I know that this is nice and central now. Now at this point, you can either take your needle and a thread and sew in your pinch, or you can do it by hand. I'll show you how to do it by hand now before I sew it. So I like to have three hills and two valleys regarding to the pinch in the middle. So the middle, as you can see, is raised. So starting in the middle, you will fold your ribbon up in the middle to make that first hill. And then on this right side, you will bring it up again and back down. And then keeping that pinched, you will do the same on this left side. So bringing it up and down again. And then you can either pop some glue in these creases, the same on the underside so it holds together, or take a piece of thread 
and wrap it around the middle a few times and then tie it off on the underside to hold it in place. But I personally don't mind sewing, so I'm going to sew in my pinch. So to sew in the pinch, taking my needle, which is already threaded with some strong thread, making sure my crease is still in line halfway where these overlap. I'm going to do six stitches. So going in through the top, through that first edge, all the way through to the knot, then coming back through for my second stitch, and then my third stitch. So my third stitch is going in just to the left of the center of the bow. So by eye, I can see that this is the center. And then I know now that the last three stitches have got to mirror these ones. So coming back up through the bottom, opposite these ones, that's my fourth stitch, my fifth stitch, and my sixth and final stitch coming up through that last corner from the bottom through to the top, like that. So this is what your stitches should look like at the top. And this is the underside. And now we're going to pull in that pinch. I'll just set that over to one side. So pulling on this thread now, that will gather up my pinch. And then I'm going to wrap that around just to hold it in place a few times. And then on this underside, I'm going to go through this last edge once. And then on the second go in, I'm not going to pull it completely tight. I'm going to go through this loose loop here a couple of times to form a knot to hold it all in place so I can trim off that excess thread. So you get that same pinch whether you do it three hand or sew it. It is just up to your own personal preference of what you prefer to do. Now I'm going to add my clip. I've got a 45 millimeter double prong clip. These are just what I like to use. My daughter don't like the toothed clips. She prefer these ones and they do hold in her very fine hair well. So these are what I'm happy to use. You can add this to a, an elastic or a headband, whatever you prefer. So this is 11 centimeters by one centimeter. And this is perfect to line my 45 millimeter clip. So I'm going to add some glue around a couple of inches along the length of that ribbon. Starting on the underside, I'm going to start wrapping this clip. Because it's an open prong clip, I don't need to run the glue all the way along that last edge. I can just do that top piece. And then when I fold this over, that will hold both sides together. So I've got a nice lined ribbon clip now. And then I'm going to add this to the underside of my bow. And then lastly, we're going to wrap the center. And of course, I am going to add some rhinestones. I'll show you roughly how I add the rhinestones, but I've got a more detailed tutorial, which I will link at the end of the video. And then next, taking the two little center strips to wrap the center of the bow. I like to do this little twist on here. As you can see, I try to make them opposite. So the pinky color, which match this side and then the bluey color, which match this side. So to do that, taking the two pieces of ribbon, you will lay one on top of the other at a slight angle at the top. And then using the lighter, melt those fibers to bond them together so that they're held together like that. And then you're going to twist them. So bringing this bottom one round and over the top. And then again, melting those fibers to bond the other end together. So you've got like this twist. And then I like to lay them on here opposite way so you've got the opposite colors so I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue in the middle of my bow lay those on there in the middle bring them round to the underside and then I'm going to glue those under the clip so one side at a time 
opening up the clip and gluing it underneath and just twist it around so I can see and do the other side. Again, opening up the clip and wrapping that round and underneath, getting rid of any excess glue off the clip. And then when you flip it over, you've got that lovely twisted look. In the middle of the bow. So I've got two now. And as you can see, this is actually all the same ribbon, but you get all different colors from that ribbon. So if I just show you that, it depends on which which part of the ribbon you cut, what colours you have showing on your bow. So you can make all different sort of styles of these if you use the rainbow ribbon. And now I'm adding my hot fix rhinestones to my bow. As you can see, I've already done this one and it adds a lovely finishing touch to the bow. So I'm going to show you how I did that on this one. I've got my hot fix tool here. I got this from AliExpress. Again, I will link it in the description below with all of the other products. I did buy some extra gems with it in different colours. I've got a tray here ready with my clear ones in. You just give it a shake so that you isolate a single gem. I've already popped on the correct head. You get all different heads for this tool. I've popped on the one for the three millimeter gems. It does tell you on there it's engraved in the tool. I'm not going to go into too much detail. If you want the full detail tutorial on how to use this hotfix tool, I will pop that in the corner here now. But this is just a rough description of how to do it. So I've got it on, it's heated up. I give this a shake to isolate a single gem. Pick the gem up and then you'll see the glue at the bottom start to turn shiny. So it begins matte and as you can see, as it melts, it goes shiny. Then once it's shiny all over, you can then pop that onto your bow where you want it. Don't hold the tool on your ribbon for too long and it will be hot to touch. So be careful when you touch it. So I just touch it onto the bow quickly and then just push it down with my finger. And then once that glue cools down, that will be stuck on there solid. So isolate another gem, pick it up, wait for that glue to turn shiny. It doesn't take too long. And then once it's shiny, touch it onto the bow where you would like it and then gently press it down. You can use a sewing thimble on your finger to touch the gem so that you don't risk burning it, or you could wrap some mask and tape around your finger to touch the gem. I don't recommend just touching it as I am, because like I said, it does get very, very hot. But rather than pushing the gem on with the tool, I would use your protected finger to do that so that you don't risk the tool burning your ribbon after you've made your lovely bow. So just touch it on there very quickly. I'm just giving it a couple of seconds to cool down and then push it on there like that. And there are the finished rainbow rhinestone tux bows. Aren't they just gorgeous? Those rhinestones just look so pretty on there. They really do finish off, which is just a basic bow really, but they look so elegant with all the rhinestones on. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you press the bell button, that will turn on notifications. And I'll be back again soon. Bye.